Hey everyone, welcome back. This week is week six of the Pandas Zero to Hero video series, a video series where I teach you simple, effective, and beginner friendly ways of using Pandas. So, this is potentially the very last video of this series, and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to combine data frames using Pandas. When working on a data science project, oftentimes you'll be working with more than one data set. So it's really important that you learn how to combine and merge your data frames um, in order to give you a better understanding and a better view of your data. This is where pandas functions like concan and merge might come in handy to help you with those tasks. And these are the two functions that I'll be covering in this tutorial. But before I begin, I just want to point out that sometimes you might come across functions like um, join and append. Um, when you're referring to other people's notebooks, um, just bear in mind that they are the equivalent of concan and merge. Um, and I won't go through join and append simply because I think that once you have mastered um, concan and merge, they should be more than sufficient enough to handle all the different scenarios um, of uh, merging data frames. So with that being said, let's just jump right into the tutorial. Uh, first of all, we're just going to go ahead and import pandas. And we're not importing any data set in this tutorial. Um, we're just simply going to create all our data frames from scratch. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I highly suggest that you go back and watch my first uh, tutorial where I teach exactly how you can create um, your own data frame using pandas. So let's um, start our tutorial off by looking at what the concat function does. So concat is a short for concatenate. Um, and this function allows you to stack uh, two separate data frames, both vertically and horizontally. So let's demonstrate this with an example. So suppose I have two data frames here, df1 and df2. Um, they are both uh, two by two, so two rows and two columns. There's an argument within the concat function called axis, and axis allows you to specify which way you would like to stack your data frame. Um, if axis is being set to one, that tells pandas that you want to stack your data frame horizontally. Um, if it is zero, um, pandas will stack your um, data frame vertically. If you do not specify any value for the axis argument, pandas will assume that it's zero, and what that means is it'll um, automatically stack your data frame vertically. So let's first look at how we can concatenate horizontally. So using the concat function, we're going to pass both our data frames in, uh, df1 and df2, in the form of a list. And because we want to concatenate horizontally, we have to set axis equals to 1. And the output should look something like this. So on the left, we have um, our first data frame, df1, uh, with Vicky and Bill. And on the right, um, we have uh, df2, which is our second data frame, John and Sabrina. So suppose we would like to concatenate uh, vertically. Um, so we're doing the exact same thing, except this time we have to set um, our axis um, to be zero. So notice how the index numbers here on the left are non-sequential, and the way you would fix that is by setting um, an additional argument within the concat function called ignore index. Uh, you want to set that to true, and pandas will go ahead and um, set the index numbers um, to sequential numbers. Uh, there's an additional argument called join. And to demonstrate this idea, I've created another data frame that looks like this. So again, I have two rows, but this time we have an additional column here called hobby. Join takes either one of two values, um, and they are outer and inner. Outer is the default for the join argument, and outer does not consider any differences in the columns between the two data frames. What pandas will do is um, it will just automatically stack the data frames, and whichever rows that don't have a corresponding values, uh, pandas will go ahead and uh, fill that with NAN. So let's observe this with an example. So suppose we want to concatenate uh, this data frame that we have on top here from before uh, with our newly created uh, data frame. And if we run this cell, the output should look something like this. And as we can see here, the first four rows came from our original data frame, uh, which we don't have any information on uh, their hobbies. And the last two rows here are from the data frame that we have just created with hobbies. So as we can see here in the hobby column, we have um, four NANs. Um, and we have the last two streaming and reading, which came um, from the data frame above. So that's what outer does. Alternatively, we can set join to be inner. And if I run this cell, let's observe what's going to happen. So inner will only stack columns that are shared between the two data frames. Because both of these data frames have the columns name and age, uh, pandas will only concatenate both these columns um, if we set um, our join to inner. And as a result of that, we'll get um, an output that looks something like this. And notice how we don't have a hobby column because hobby doesn't exist in TF3. All right, so now we're going to move on to merge. And to demonstrate the idea behind merge, I've created two sample data frames of a retail store, one for its sales data and one for its um, customer profile. I won't go into detail how I created the two data frames, but if you are interested, you can find this notebook uh, up on my GitHub. I'll put a link in the video description. Um, but for now, um, I'll just show you guys what the final output is going to look like. So this is what our sales uh, look like. So we have uh, our date column, we have customer ID, 
Um, we have the store in which the transaction is being made and we have the sales mail. And what I've done in this cell is simply sort the date going from earliest uh, to the latest date. And if we look at the shape of our sales um, data frame, it is a thousand rows with four columns. So the four columns are date, customer ID, store, and sales. As for the customer profile data frame, we have two columns. Uh, so they are customer ID and customer life stage. So customer ID here is the same customer ID as um, we have in the sales data frame. And as for the shape of the customer's um, data frame, we have 100 rows and two columns. And those two columns are customer ID and customer life stage. And if I apply the end unique function uh, to the customer ID column in the customer's data frame, we have 100 unique customer IDs. And what this means is every single row in our customer's data frame corresponds to a unique customer ID. And in this cell, I'm going to use the log function to select transactions that have been made uh, by customer with customer ID 1. All right, so now let's look at how we can apply the merge function. So we want to pass in both our customer's profile data frame as well as our sales data frame into the merge function. If I run this cell, the output should look something like this. So what Merge has done is go through both the customer's data frame as well as the sales data frame and merge the two data frames together based on the column that is shared between the two data frames. And in our example, that would be the customer ID column which exists both in the customer's profile data frame as well as the sales data frame. So to understand a little bit how this works, let's look at the sales that's being made by customer ID number one. So what Merge has done is check customer ID one and see which customer life stage does it belong to. So as we can see in our customer's profile data frame, customer ID one is a senior. So what Merge is gonna do is it'll go ahead and create a new column. And every time it sees that there's a sales being made by customer ID one, it'll simply fill it up with uh, the value senior. And if we have a look at the sales data, customer data as well as the combined data frame, we can see here sales data has a thousand rows and four columns. Uh, customer data, we have a hundred rows and two columns. Uh, and our combined data frame has the same number of rows as our sales data. Uh, but with an additional column, and that additional column is the customer life stage column. Now we're going to explore the how argument within the merge function, which allows you to specify the direction in which you would like to merge your data frames. To demonstrate the how argument, I've created two data frames. The first one is called size, so I have three rows and two columns. The first column is called um, color, and so I have red, blue, and green. Um, and for the second column, I have size, medium, small, and medium. And as for the second uh, data frame, it's called gender. So again, gender, we have three rows and two columns. So the first two colors are the same. So I have red and blue, uh, but the third color is different. So instead of a green, I have a yellow. And for the second column, we have sex. So female, female, and male. Um, so if I pass in both my data frames, size and gender into the merge function, and by setting how to inner, so in the output, we will see two rows and three columns, red and blue, um, color, size, and sex. And the reason why there's only red and blue is because red and blue showed up both in this data frame as well as in this data frame. Alternatively, if we set how to alter, columns where there's no information attached to it, pandas will automatically fill that up with null values. So what that means is, say for example, if we look at the green row here, because green doesn't have any information on its sex, pandas will fill it up with NAN. Because yellow doesn't show up in the size data frame, pandas has filled the size cell of the yellow color with not a value. How also takes the value of left or right, and this is where the order in which you pass your data frame becomes important. So suppose I have set my how to left. This tells pandas that I want to keep everything in the size data frame, so red, blue, and green, and fill whichever cells that don't have any information. So if I scroll back up to the size data frame, so this is our size data frame, red, blue, and green. And because we don't have any sex information on the color green, pandas will fill up with NAN as we have seen here. So on the other hand, if we set uh, the how argument to right, this tells pandas that we want to keep everything in the right data frame. So in this case, it would be the gender data frame. So in the rows, we have red, blue, and yellow. Because yellow doesn't have any information on its size, pandas has filled the size cell with NAN. All right, so that wraps up this week's tutorial. If you enjoyed that, um, I would appreciate if you could drop a like on the video, um, subscribe to my channel, and pass the video around to anyone you know who's learning data science to help them in their learning. With that being said, take care, keep learning, and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.